It's July 20th, 1969. Across the country, an estimated 650 million Americans have tuned in to watch the first men land on the moon. Also watching is Joe Thompson. You don't know her name yet, but without Joe and her sister seamstresses, those men would have never made it to the moon and back again. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. My name is Joe Thompson, and back in the 60s, I sewed on spacesuits for Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins. And we would bury the thread like that, and see, now it's tucked under. When I was about six or seven was when my aunt taught me about sewing, so that I was able to make a pretty decent doll dress. <laughs> I am proud I was a seamstress, and I'm glad that what we did was a great success. But the seamstresses really have gone undocumented. Right there, that's me. Without our attention to detail and our dedication, they would not have been able to do what they did. In 1966, Joe was recruited onto an elite team of seamstresses by former bra factory ILC Dover. In the years to come, she'd help create some of the most complicated technology of the 20th century. There were layers of insulation. The cemented area that held the air when they inflated it, that was the inner layer. Then there was an outer layer. Inside even all of that, he had like a spandex suit that had tubes running in through it. Then there was a neck ring that the helmet attached to. It was quite an engineering Marvel. <laughs> My job required me to do things that were technical and challenging. When we cut the uh, items out, it had to be placed back on the pattern to be accepted, and it was not more than a 64th of an inch. The tolerance of a 64th of an inch is very small. It's um, probably not much more than a hairbreadth. If you made a needle hole by stitching wrong somewhere, when the suit was under pressure, then the suit would leak. If his suit started leaking air, there's only one thing could happen, and that would be he wouldn't make it back home. Fifty years ago is a long time. I think it was fairly early in the evening, it was when he got out and stepped on the moon that I really felt like this is the final test of what we did. I had a small black and white TV with not a whole lot of good reception. I suppose there was more people there, but to me I was the only one there and I was the only one that was responsible for this man being on the moon, holding my breath to make sure he made it back again. Every time I see the moon, it reminds me of all the people I worked with and what we made, and I look up there and I think, a man was actually on that moon, and he actually wore something that I had my hand on. Can't believe it. 